let me take you by the hand We'll lead you through the streets of London I'll show you something so we can change your mind so This is Covent Garden and it's called Covent Garden because back in the 15th century the whole area back from Long Acre up there all the way down to the Strand was walled off and belonged to the convent or the monastery of the monks in Westminster Abbey. It's a place very dear to my heart because I used to work here at a miniature Hamley's toy shop but uh, it has all changed. I mean now the whole place is full of those confounded pedicab blooming rickshaws now. Total rip-off as well in my opinion. <laughs> Quicker to walk. This is the Royal Opera House, of course, and it's the home of the Royal Ballet. Interestingly, in 1837, the manager, William McCready, invented this concoction where he mixed hydrogen with oxygen and added lime to it. And he discovered that when he shone this light onto the subject on stage, this had a really good effect of singling out the person on stage. Because lime was added to this solution, that's where we get the expression being in the limelight. And just opposite the Royal Opera House is what used to be Bow Street Magistrate's Court. And Henry Fielding used to sit as a magistrate here, Henry Fielding being the famous author. And it was his idea to first come up with the Bow Street Runners, who were pretty much Britain's first police force. There was only about six of them though, I believe. It then also became the first police station in Britain when Sir Robert Peel formed the Metropolitan Police Force. And that is incidentally why we call police Bobbies. Bob being short for Robert, as in Sir Robert Peel. My name is Dr Philistine. I've been performing in Covent Garden uh, for like about 24 years. Captain Franco, Franco with a K, not like the Spanish dictator, like the friendly entertainer. Do... I do a flea circus, I've got one of Britain's only flea circuses. Comedy trousers. <laughs> Hang on, I haven't got changed yet, what are you talking about? That's, that's my street clothes, that is. It's been a long time, I haven't yeah, seen long, you for bloody long... ages. About maybe 15 years, yeah. yeah, 15 years. How does it work here then? We arrive on a morning on the West Piazza and there's a lottery and when, whoever comes out first every day gets the option of the first slot. It's an art form in itself. It's about the movement of people and the thinking of people and how to attract people's attention, how to sustain the attention. It's all changed, not the same as in my day. None of these shops have anybody in them. That's where I used to work. I used to, I used to be Hamleys. <laughs> Turned it into what, Christian Dior? I used to stand outside with these funny puppets for about seven years I was there. Unbelievable. No. Hamley's is now an empty shell. There we go, I used to walk down those stairs. I won't tell you the stories that used to go on in there, but my friends know just what I'm talking about. I used to skive off and uh, end up in the pub, which was just over here, but it's now turned into La Durée. Yeah, I used to sit up on that balcony, <laughs> pretend that I was off trying to sell toys somewhere. This is St. Paul's Church, not to be confused with St. Paul's Cathedral. And just under here, underneath this colonnade also of the church, is where the first Punch and Judy show was ever performed in 1662. Now, I believe in this theatre in uh, 1704, there was this pretty hopeless playwright called John Dennis, and he had come out with this play called uh, Appius and Virginia, in which there's some thunder. And he had developed this new method of creating a sound of thunder, which was something like rattling metal balls around in a mustard bowl, they say. And uh, anyway, the play did pretty badly, and it got, got ditched by the company, but they started doing Macbeth quite nearby. And uh, they also had thunder in that, and they stole his version of creating this sound of thunder. And he said, damn them, they will not let my play run, but they steal my thunder. And since then, we've got this very handy phrase. This is Drury Lane. And uh, the English claim to have invented quite a lot of things. They even claim to have invented boxing, which is a bit ridiculous because let's face it, it's just fighting. But one thing they do claim to have invented is the sandwich. John Montague, the fourth Earl of Sandwich, was gambling in a place called the Beefsteak Club, which was in a pub called the Shakespeare Head. It was in a street called Witch Street, so it got knocked down and then turned into Old Witch. Anyway, he was there gambling. They said, do you want something to eat? And he said, yes, I'll have some meat between two pieces of bread. And everyone else in the club said, oh, we'll have what Sandwich is having. And so everyone... Oh, it's 32 years now since I rolled off a number 13 bus in the Strand in 1982. 33 years, yeah. 
there's two music pitches and the jugglers all worked on the other end and this place is London to me, you know. This place used to be full of banyos, brothels, coffee houses, poets. It's just where we are now. There was a pub called the Shakespeare's Head Tavern, a notorious pub. That is the one that Shakespeare's Head is supposed yeah. to be where the sandwich was invented. The head waiter was a guy called Jack Harris. Jack Harris was a pimp and he, there was a book called Harris's List of Covent Garden Ladies, which was published about 40 years. For two shillings and sixpence, you could get an annual list of around 150 prostitutes, physical attributes, sexual preferences, prices, things they were prepared to do. Other publications included The Wandering Whore, available from 1660 to 1661. Mary Holland, according to this book, was tall, graceful, comely and shy of favours, but could be mollified for the cost of £20. Her sister, Elizabeth, on the other hand, was less expensive, being indifferent to money, but a supper and two guineas would have tempted her. The oldest building in Covent Garden is Russell House, which is um, to, the, to the right of the church with the, pot, with the columns. In My Fair Lady, actually, this is where Henry Higgins first meets Eliza Doolittle. Because it was actually done on a set in Hollywood, they've actually got the square back to front. That's Russell House over there. And I think it's because they based it on the Hogarth painting called Morning. But Hogarth's prints were, of course, done off a, a etching. When he etched something and then he printed it out, everything came off back to front. Either that or they fed the negative through the machine back to front. Well, it's worn and shoes. In his eyes, you see no... Now, if you enjoy my films, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Or if you actually want a private tour of London, you could contact me on my website, jewelsguys.com. So, uh, see you next time. And say for you that your sun don't shine. Let me take you by the hand and lead you through the streets of London.